flashcards are handy when learning a new language or when you have a speech but just want some cue cards with you to remind you of all the essential points you need to discuss which is why in this video we will be reviewing kyoku flashcards Hey guys, it's Rob Sipek with Paperless X, a channel that is all about digital productivity. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your work, studies, or business. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human being, welcome back. Make sure your notifications are turned on so you know each time we release a new video. There are a lot of flashcards apps on App Store, but none come close to replicating the idea behind paper flashcards. The best way to go digital is to be able to do what we can do on paper, but do it better. That is the approach our developers took when creating this application. Kyoko flashcards is available for your iPad and iPhone for $2.99, a one-time purchase, and the developers have spoken to me about how they would like to keep their application non-subscription. Kyoko Flashcards is a minimalist flashcard application. I have finally found the perfect application for learning my French vocabulary. Let's create a new card deck so we get started with using the application. This application is very simple and straightforward. It is very intuitive and you won't be wasting any time trying to understand how it works. Your flashcard has a front and a back side. You can work on whichever you want in any order you like, effortlessly switching between the sides. The flashcard itself fills the right size of the physical flashcards that we know. If I were a determined human being, I would have gone to buy a deck of flashcards to show you this. I'm just not determined enough. Besides, paper goes against everything we stand for, so we won't be doing that. You can't zoom in to make it smaller. Flashcards are already small enough, right? You can zoom out your flashcards if you want to add more information to the card than you do on physical ones, which is awesome. You can style your flashcards. They can be ruled, dotted squared or blank let's hope in the future we'll be able to customize our line spacing this is the standard flashcard line spacing though but more options wouldn't hurt that is the beauty of going digital is it not so you can take away most of those physical limitations you get with paper you have the apple notes writing tools couldn't be happier. While naturally you might not like using the tool set for serious note taking, it works very well for flashcards. For your writing tools, you get a pencil and a pen. You can adjust your pen tool or your writing tool's thickness, opacity, and colors. You can also highlight to make information pop out of the page. These tools work exactly like the ones in Apple Notes. Kyoko Flashcards has all the cool features that come with Apple Notes toolset, including the ability to add space between written sections and you can hide the toolbar and move it around the page. The handwriting experience in the application is incredible. There is no lag. It really feels as if you're writing in Apple Notes. You can also split view with other apps. We usually create our flashcards from other notes. So split view support for this application is thus essential. Because the application uses the Apple Notes toolset, it supports true dark mode. Dark mode support is fantastic, especially if you can just switch it up in one tap. Kyok Flashcards is currently on version 1.13.0. It's been around for less than a year, which leaves a lot of room for improvement. As far as digital flashcards are concerned, they nailed it. They managed to replicate our paper experience. However, we look forward to going beyond paper replication, a situation where paper flashcards start looking like a joke. Here's how we can start moving in that direction. We'll need support for drag and drop or copy and paste out of other applications, addition of photos and text, and different page colors would be fun, but not necessary for flashcards, but why not? I'd love to have flashcards with different colors. 
I think that will be fun. When you're finished creating your flashcards, will your flashcard save it and go back to the homepage of the application to add a new card? It feels a bit manual for a digital workflow. It almost feels like I am physically picking up some flashcards. A shortcut for adding a new card within the workspace would be better. A double tap gesture or a plus icon would be really useful because going back and forth from the homepage every flashcard is a bit annoying if you have many flashcards to add. You can edit already created flashcards. You can move it to a new deck or delete it. The organization in the app needs some work. Folders in the application will help us organize our flashcards a lot better. I have thousands of French words to learn. Having them on one deck makes for one impossible mission to learn. And it's just a bit discouraging when you're looking at a deck and it has like 5,000 cards. You're like, hmm, maybe not today. The app does offer the options to study 10, 20, or 30 cards per session, but I think folders in the application will solve that and will be much better. Um, that way you can organize your flashcards. Like in my case, I can organize my vocabulary into relations, occupations, bathroom, sitting room, that sort of thing. It is a more practical approach. When reviewing your flashcards, you can decide if the card you reviewed was hard, medium, or easy. Setting fewer cards is better because the application gives you a bit of encouragement. It gives you a sense of accomplishment to keep you going. After all, it is those small accomplishments that add up eventually. Some metrics in the application will be useful, a way to tell you how you're doing and the ability to focus on, say, hard flashcards or easy ones. The application currently has no way to help you with that. Let's hope that is something they will come up with in later versions of the application. Under settings, you get to set the number of cards you review per session, 10, 20, or 30. Review direction from front to back or back to front. Why would you want to review a flashcard from the back? Actually, that kind of makes sense now that I think about it. You can also set a default style for your flashcards and rename the deck. Kyoko Flashcards has no way to recover your deleted decks or flashcards. The application also doesn't warn you before deleting the deck that will be gone forever. A recycle bin is a must-have for any application dealing with documents of any kind, so let's hope they will add that soon. You can set how the application appears, system, which copies your iPads mode. You can set it to light or dark mode. You can also turn on the option to write with your finger, probably more useful on the iPhone or iPad if you don't have a stylus. Speaking of iPhone, the application syncs seamlessly between your devices in milliseconds, which is strange considering they don't actually have a setting for this in the application, which is very impressive. This syncing between your iPad and your iPhone is great because flashcards are fun to create on the iPad but they are more fun to study off your iPhone. The big screen on the iPad suddenly looks ridiculous when you're reviewing the small cards. Lastly, the application doesn't support multiple flashcard selection on the homepage. Support for that will be helpful because deleting one page at a time is a bit of a pain. That pretty much covers everything you need to know about Kyoko flashcards, the perfect solution for your digital flashcards. I hope you guys found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know what you guys think about digital flashcards in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.